So today I'm talking about a refined graphene tree models with application of uh, AI, um, uh, art um, artificial um, nano network, apparel export from Asian country along the Bam Roads to the United States. And except me, actually, my co author including Dr. Danny Ho, as well as uh, Dr. Joseph Lau from PolyU and Hansen University, respectively. So, um, I'm going to talk about research aims and the literature review on Bear Road Initiative and its role in uh, FDI, as well as the research methodology and data set and the panel analysis of graphite chain models and the linear network models. And last but not least, about the research contribution and the discussion of future research direction. And being the world's second largest apparel importer after the EU, how would the US apparel trade be affected by China Bear Road Initiative? So we'll talk about this um, impact later. And the second thing is this study aims to examine the changing pattern of apparel export from China to and, and the 15 neighboring um, country, including South and Southeast Asian country like uh, Bangladesh, India, Vietnam to the U.S. under the BRI initiative. And we find the graphic models has been built to explain the bilateral trade pattern from 2008 to 2022, uh, because the 2023 data is updated. So we just get the most updated one. And the regression models for panel data approach and um, ANN has been applied to estimate the apparel export value in this study. To develop the, the, the objective of this uh, research is to develop and extend the graphic models to predict the clothing trade pattern between the US and the developing country in South and Southeast Asia under the BNI, BRI, and to evaluate the, uh, the panel data regressions and the ANN in the production of bilateral trade of US and Asian exporter for 2008 to 2000, uh, 2022. So from this graph, you can see that there is a 39% share of um, um, U.S. apparel and textile import from China. So we can see that China is the most important um, most important uh, global factory in the world. And uh, and uh, followed by uh, back then, there's only dropped to 10%. So you can see that China is a very important uh, clothing and textile importer to um, USA. And BRI, Bear and Road Initiative is a, a strategic um, policy under China in order to increase the net, uh, national level between China and the other country within along this uh, Bear and Road. And this initiative was launched in 2013 by China to increase the cooperation between China and the region, regional country. And uh, Jiang in 2016 posted three important questions for researchers involved in studying BRI in order to explore objective and motivation behind Barrow Initiative. Of course, some people think that is positive one, but particularly if someone can um, can let the China uh, helping them to build their infrastructure, right? But uh, on the other hand, some country like the uh, US or uh, India. They may think that that is not a good point because um, uh, they think that, especially U.S., they think that they are factoring their own um, uh, production site in U.S. Right, and and the role on the role of in fact investment and trade as major task of BRI and which of the sixty countries in Asia, Europe, and Africa is part of the initiative. Furthermore, researchers suggest that BRI study must also include gain and losses. So as I say, they have a positive and negative impact in this world. Uh, therefore, this study responds to call for of research by Xing and Ying in 2019 and Hims in 2019 on investigations the role of international trade between nations in apparel trade with regard to Bell and Road Initiative with special case between U.S. Asian bilateral trade and the BRI. So um, I talk about the Asian country um, of clothing export under BRI. So Asian has been a major clothing supplier of the U.S. market by value. You can see that uh, um, based on the previous graph, you can see that China was the biggest exporter followed by Vietnam, Bangladesh, Indonesia, and India. 
taking inspiration from the name and purpose of the original Silk Road, and that involved the trade of Chinese silk to Europe. It is not surprising that the new road will have a major impact on Chinese developing country along Barren Road and Global Coffin Chai. It's appeared that BRI would benefit not only China, but also country that get the most inflow from the full FDI of Chinese company. For the apparel industry in Asia, BRI would offer potential trading and expansion opportunity where business with production facility in China would be located to lower cost country within Asia. Because you know that uh, nowadays the, um, the insurance or the other uh, manpower like the labor cost has already rise in China. So uh, the, the Chinese company have think about that, how they can move their, their uh, production size to the other lower cost country like Vietnam or like the India or Sri Lanka, something like that. So Ben Ro will provide them a very good uh, opportunity to move to that country. Like, uh, like in 1980 from Hong Kong, they moved to China. And from the from the um, uh, eastern part of China, like Hangzhou, they moved to the northern part to China. But now all the mainland China, they appreciate the appreciation of RMB. That's why they they would like to move to the other uh, lower cost country. The establishment the establishment of clothing production in the regional BRI members country would increase their economic developments by creating more jobs as well as to improving their labor uh, welfare as well. Most importantly. This BRI country would take the opportunity to build stronger link to global clothing supply chain and increase the export net economics growth globally. So the US is the why we choose US as our importer, and I mean the, the, the trading partners, because US is the world second largest clothing importer after the whole European Union. According to trade uh, Come trade 2019, U.S. clothing import value has been growing overall. In 2021, the U.S. import 91.5 million U.S. dollars clothing products from the world, representing around 10% increase um, since 2008. So you can see that that is my uh, that is the uh, graphic trading models. Uh, graphic trading models actually there is a regression models from the left hand side. There's a total value of trade between the country I and J. That means the bilateral trade, the export or import values of these two countries. And the right hand side, including the the GDP or per capita GDP or distance between that two uh, particular uh, trading partners, including some of the important parameters like uh, the labor cost, like the GDP, like the distance between two trading partners, like uh, exchange rate, like um, uh, the the numbers of females worker as well, because we know that in the clothing industry, majority of the worker they like to use uh, uh ladies like to use females because their hand is more thin or they can do some of the sophisticated uh, uh handcraft. So the data set will include the six South uh, South Asian countries, including Bangladesh, China, India, Nepal, and the ten uh, uh etc. And the ten South uh, South Asian countries like below. And the historical data on clothing export rate, at the, um, we will find this information from the SIC, SITC level um, obtained by the United Nations country data, data set. And the GDP data set we, come, we collected from the World Bank statistic uh, data set. And the research methodology, uh, uh, the panel data estimation approach, and the ANN are built using the data from 2008 to 2022 to predict the trade pattern of coming year. And the data are divided into two groups, the trade pattern from 2008 until 2014 that are considered who have experienced little to influence of BRI. And while the second data set from 2015 uh, onwards are treated with the BRI impact. So the panel data estimation approach Actually, that panel data estimation approach is a econometric analysis. It's a pool, pool cost sectional PCS or the cost sectional CS or ordinary square OLS is often utilized in the graphic trade models. However, this estimation approach are uh, argued to create biased result um, because due to uh, there is some uh, bias. So in the error term for the standards, 
um, cross-sectional regression uh, equations, there is an overestimate the results. That means the result will not be accurate. So the panel data estimation can overcome the problem caused, created by the OLS approach. Actually, what is the meaning name of um, panel data estimation approach? Actually, they are using the cross-sectional as well as they are, they are using the time series and the cross-sectional together. So the, the data will be much stronger. I mean, the, the, the values, uh, the, the amount of the, of the uh, data will be double. Increase the volumes of informative data in uh, availability with less biased among the variables as well. So there is allow more degree of freedoms and efficiency. You can see that there is a structure of uh, artificial and neural network. You can see that there is an input. Input mean what is the important variables we put in the graph literary models. We put the exporter GDP, exporter mean China, right? Uh, uh, exporter GDP, importer GDP, US. Uh, the exchange rate of uh, RMB, uh to US dollar, the distance between uh, this this uh, uh, 15, uh, 15 plus China, that are uh, all this Asian country population, as well as the distance between these two destinations we put together into the panel data. And then, of course, we will, we will, we will put the BRI in our data set as well. So BRI is the dummy variables, and there is a hidden layer. And after all, we will have the prediction like the outer layer as well as the target. That means we would like to predict the export value in 2023 and also the actual export values. That means the one which we will see uh, maybe after this year, right? And then you can see that the create uh, ANN with 3 to 20 not in the uh, hidden layer as this page uh, uh, creations of ANN to identify the best ANN with the largest um, R square and the smallest RMSE. And how we can uh, 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 train, training and testing of ANN. So we were to implement our ANN in um, Python, our ANN are created and trained in the uh, particular environments on Google platform. So the training data with 64 of, uh, observation is divided into 32 branches, which it with a branch size of two is 32 uh, iterations to compute one uh, approach, which is the complete cycle of the whole training data learned by ANN in this data. Um, 200 uh, units are set to train each ANN with a learning rate of 0.01. So we can see that the best ANN is 13 from this um, result. And then you can see the findings of the graphic chain models. You can see that um, uh, the R square is around 62%. That means they can explain 62% of the um, the reason behind. I mean, that means uh, uh, we can explain all these all these variables like the exporter, importer, GDP, real exchange rate, distant populations, and BLI can explain 62% of the equation. How is this impact the bilateral trade between this um, 16 Asian country with the US export of uh, apparel? And you can see that the stronger protection of, uh, uh, ability of ANN is pointed. You can see that there is a um, 63, uh, around 64 percent, huh? Uh, in the out of sample prediction, the best ANN attained R square of 92 and the RMSE of 0 0.28, whereas the regression model only achieved 63.5 and the RMSE of 0 0.54. So we can see that the ANN R square, I uh, mean, the R square of A under ANN can achieve 92 percent, but but yeah, if you can see this one, if we only use the uh, use the panel data estimation, only achieve 62. So the discussion is the value and the size of the data coefficient are consistent with expectations. So no matter we are using panel data estimation or we use ANN, the the value and the size of the data coefficient they are consistent with expectation means. If they are talking about uh, the GDP of exporter, that should have a positive impact. And the importer GDP and negative impact will actually have the positive impact. Distant have negative impact. That means the farther distant, the lesser 
uh, value of export value will be result. And uh, exporter and importer population have the impact, at a good impact. Um, that means the positive impact towards the uh, apparel's uh, import. Uh, the BRI also have the um, positive impact on apparel's uh, tray. But both of ANN and uh, panel data estimation can conclude there is a consistent with expectation. And the research of BRI shows significantly positive impact, 11% growth on the US Asian bilateral clothing trade within this period of time. With the BRI as an ongoing um, opportunity in which more projects are being launched and business opportunity continues to uh, materialize, the partnering country of the BRI is highlighting its potential for foreign direct investment in trade led manufacturing. And the past few years have witnessed a growth in FDI from China to the clothing industry in South and Southeast Asia, BRI country. This is important and this worth us to consider that this country enjoy a lower labor cost advantage as compared to China. This has meant that some of the clothing company have relocated to different country in uh, anticipations of lower labor costs, lower production costs from China to Cambodia, Bangladesh, or um, uh, Vietnam. This, uh, that is uh, based on the other paper published by, by me in 2019. Yet, company in this section not only have to address the challenge of growing production costs, but also the rise in protectionism, which threatened the global trade. If you remember that when the time uh, Donald Trump was the president in USA, he always likes to write up the protectionism or anti dumping tax, right? So uh, particularly, they are targeting um, apparel industry. So unsettling uh, geopolitics like the US-China uh, trade war, uh, also um, tackling this trend that this puts the supply and production of clothing products and issue related to the sustainability of natural environments has also been the center of concern and have impact on the clothing industry for all of the members along the supply chain. These powerful forces will continue to shape the developments of the clothing industry under the BRI initiative. Furthermore, they will render global clothing production and trade a context um, relationship for our future study. And there's few uh, research contribution, uh, including the results show a superior protection power of ANN and from 2015 onwards. That means it proved that BRI has um, positive impact on text uh, on clothing industry. There's a reduction of China clothing export, while others major exporters have experienced growth at various degree. And for the future study, this study is limited to analyzing conventional economics factor and other factors such as the labor cost production and the uh, logistic performance index are important factor for major consideration when doing the analysis. This can be investigated in future research study as well. And this is the references of this paper. And this is the end of our presentation. And thank you for attention and welcome any questions to me. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. Okay, thank you for that. So we're just going to set up the link here for people online if you would like to ask any questions. Okay, so thank you, thank you. If anyone in the room has a question, just uh, let me know and I'll come over and speak to you. Okay, uh, while we're waiting to set this up, maybe I can ask you a, a quick question. So it seems like it's pretty good at analyzing uh, the 2008 to 2022 period um, from what you've shown there. And it's interesting it's 2008 because just before the financial yeah. collapse, um, I'm wondering how good the predictive element of this is, because as you mentioned, Donald Trump or yeah. uh, geopolitical situations, uh, they can they be factored into this or is that something that you just cannot account for? Actually, that is a good question. Thank you. Um, if you if you wanted to include a factor you think that it's important in our field, actually, you can we can put any factor into the model to run. For example, like this particular paper, I would like to see the impact of BRI. That's why I put the dummy variable like the BRI. So as I already, you, you wanted to know the the China and US trade war, right? So that is the other paper of mine. Um, so I put the 
I put the, uh, some of the variables. If you would like to be more accurate, I will put the tax rate as well, the percentage. So we can see that which, which particular territory will be affected the most, like the lead wear or the, the, the shed, like the different material, like cotton or silk, or if you wanted to see as a general, so you can just put the dummy variable, like the, the, uh, Sino us trade war started from 2008. So I just put CO and one as a dummy variable, but, but if we, we wanted to have a very in-depth, uh, investigation for particular material, like steel, polyester, cotton, because us, um, always like to add the tax on cotton, something like that. So, so we can see the trend as well. So it depends. If you wanted to put anything you you have interest, you we can just put in the variable to run. Of course, sometimes they don't have any impact, but at least we know the result. At least we know we know that is the the answer. It's also interesting. Huh? Definitely very flexible as well by the look of it. So yeah. Yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. Any questions uh, from those in the room or online? Do feel free to scan the QR code. <laughs> oh yes. And they used to pay the product of an apple company. We know that the export import and then the exchange rate, etc. Yes, can we use it? And then we can use it to speculate the stock price actually. It, it, that is a very good question. If we have all this data, we can run no matter there's a company level or a national level, that is that is no problem. If we can, for example, like when I work in the H&M uh, company as a business controller, actually I use the, the same model to help my company to open a location in Utopia. That is company level, but of course, you know that firm level data is difficult to get because it's confidential. But that time, because I'm the business controller, a global business controller. So I talked with the CFO, he said, no problem. You can use your data to help us to find the new location of H&M. So you know that H&M is a very conservative. Somehow, I mean in their mindset because H&M is from Sweden, unlike Sarah. Sour is from spring. Spanish people, you know their history, right? So the Sweden people, they are quite, uh, they need a sense of security. So they they asked me, okay, you use your your PhD model to run. And then um, they, they let me use around maybe six months to run the model. They give me all the data. And then I run the model. I said, okay, either you open, you can open in Utopia or uh, uh, Mexico. Actually, Mexico, long, long time ago, uh, Polo has already set up there. Of course, a long time ago, they set up there, even uh, Sara. But they say, no, Eve, it's very dangerous there. We went to uh, Mexico, and then I, they, even we go to supermarket, they just put like a gel, right? The, the, the cashier, they, they put, um, how can I say, they use a partition to, to, to separate the customer and the cashier. They say, no, no, we scare. We were scared. We will not go there, Eve. I said, okay. Then let's try Africa country. Yeah. Then they 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 take my uh, opinion. But of course, they will send a local people as the Sweden people set up a company there and stay there for six months to for the all the observation. And then after that, they will move some of the team members there. And one thing H and M is good is they never did corruption. They will, they will try, they will, they will put all the paperwork, they will undergo all the paperwork in order to get into that market. That's why you know that why they opened up Hong Kong market in 2000, I think 2000, and then they go to China after so many years. So because they, they undergo the proper way to do the business.